what's going on YouTubers for ladies and gentlemen it's the natural born thriller and welcome everyone to this TNA wrestling review where it to these TNA impact results from February 22nd 2024 this was the go home show edition for TNA no surrender and after that folks once I give you um you know the feedback uh, the results for TNA um, Impact. I will we'll go straight to my predictions for TNA No Surrender. I just gotta find the car first. Because um, as I was recording, the show of you No know, Surrender has already happened. I just haven't seen it yet. So, so what I'm gonna do is go um, back to the cars again, just like I did uh, from episode 116 from Being the Asylum. And there you go. That's pretty much it from there. So, um, so let's get ready for this impact results for TNA Wrestling Review. So, the opening match was the TNA Exhibition Champion Chris Saban versus Jason Hotch with John Schuyler. You know, the good hands. And the match uh, itself was pretty good. Chris Saban and Jason Hotch. Uh, in the end, it was Chris Saban, obviously, getting the win on Jason Hotch. And that's pretty much it. This is basically, you know, Chris, Chris Saban's, um, you know, showcase here. But it was also a showcase to Jason Hotch, who is not known to, uh, you know, you know, to be Bush, um, you know, to be pushed very strongly. Or it tends to, um, be an enhancement tag team talent with, you know, John Schuyler of the good hands. But he gets to showcase what he was um he was um, capable of in the you know for this company of TNT wrestling and I think he did a good job. So uh, we'll see where uh, where this leads to um you know for the rest of uh, rest of this whole thing with the good hands. After the match though, we get another uh, video uh, address from Mustafa Ali as he promised to re visualize the exhibition. Well, he becomes the TNA Exhibition Champion against No Surrender, which again, I'll get to more of that, that preview of it, um, before, you know, I give you the rest of the, of this, um, results for TNA Impact. Then we get, uh, the system coming up promo, you know, retains to their match, the main event from this show, and also retains some moves, or retains to being in a uh, match where there's no rules called the No Surrenders Rules match against Alex Shelley for the TNA World Championship. And, you know, they're going to basically use that as their, uh, the advantage where it tends to uh, interferences. That's when Director of Authority, Santino Brother, comes in and says that no one of the system can get involved in the match, only on the participants. If any of the um, members of the system come, comes into play in the match, you know, for No Surrender, not only Moose will lose, but he will also lose the TNA World title to Alex Shelley. And the same goes to Alex Shelley. If someone from Alex Shelley's um, you know, camp interferes, the then Alex Shelley will lose the match. So it's fair game for both sides. So there you go. And that's pretty much it for that one. And we'll get to that match later on, which tends to the six man tag team match. Chris Saban. He talks about his um, that he's going to be facing Mustafa Ali. Um, and. He's, you know, basically let uh, Mustafa Ali uh, know that he's going to find out exactly why he is a 10-time exhibition champion. And as he leaves, we see a poster on the wall that says, In Ali We Trust, with obviously a picture of Mustafa Ali. So. Simon Gotch versus Jack Price. As Simon Gotch gets ready, um, you know, before I get to the match itself, um, I just thought uh, to say his entrance, by the way. Um, he was wearing some kind of a uh, mask, which I never, um, I never see a, a mask like that before. But it looked pretty cool though that mask on um, that he was wearing, and he had a uh, you know a, a vest with a hoodie on as well. Where I think that's what it was. But um, presentation looked, looked good for Simon Gotch. So we get the matches on the way, but all of a sudden, Charles Alexander shows up. Now there's a a, a no touch clause. Here between these two because they will rest, they will not be wrestling each other, won't be touching each other until no surrender. And also we're supposed to hear about um you know you know to address this whole thing with Josh Alexander and 
Sam and Gosh's uh, issues with one of the, you know, things that happened five years ago. Um, we kind of got that on commentary from Josh Alexander. Um, and that's basically uh, what they did there, you know, basically uh, a, a lazy way to, uh, you know, to hear from Josh Alexander, you know, if anyone wanted to listen to what he was saying. While this match was going on was Simon Gotch versus Jack Price. And Simon Gotch was good in the match, by the way. Uh, looked like he never lost a step, and obviously he won. So, after the match, you know, he didn't want to go all the other submission hole he had on. After he delivered the, um, the Scout-style power driver. Uh, basically went for the Bulldog choke. And refused to let go. Charles Alexander comes in, and they go face to face, so they know the rules that they cannot touch each other. Uh, otherwise, they will not have that match on no surrender. So they didn't touch each other, so they won't be see, won't, there won't be any touching until we see their match at no surrender. So the Grizzle Young Vets they declare a victory for the thir their third match for the the best of three series against the TNA World Tag Team Champions ABC. And what a promo it was, folks, for tends to the Grizzle Young Vets. Uh, and they ended by saying, Grit your teeth. We gave you a package of Kong versus PCO. Not really uh, a fan of this few, to be honest with you, folks. But basically, they're, they're pushing this with this whole thing of Clash of a Monster uh, that they're doing. Basically, that's basically what they're doing here. It's a. Uh, just um, two monsters um, you know, having a showdown. And that's basically what it is. Uh, but I did enjoy the um, the whole thing with PCO um, yelling out, KONG! <laughs> I'm pretty sure your Star Trek fans get the reference of that. So, um, Steve Macklin with the Rascals, Trey Miguel and Jackie Wentz versus Trent Seven with Mike Bailey. There was no Nick Nemeth on the show, and uh, you know that that was a, a tall sign about you know, based on what happened uh, with him over in Puerto Rico because it was Steve Macklin this time. So that's probably the reason why you know, he, he wasn't there. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he will show up at uh, No Surrender. You know, if if anything pertains to what's going to happen, um, you know, for that No Surrender match, um, which we'll get to more on that later, by the way. But Trent Seven um, versus Steve Macklin was a pretty good match with Steve Macklin getting the win. He, um, you know, I thought you know, at least, you at least um, have Trent Seven win here, but no, uh, that wasn't the case at all. Trent Seven ends up losing, so uh, it's most for that. <laughs> mm. I'll tell you one thing, he's he's being booked a lot better than than, who he, than how he's been booked on AEW. I'll tell you that much. To Joe Shaw, she she talks about you know giving of the of the death weight of you know, of Jay and and Savannah. Also, you know, Kim comes shows up and says, you know that's that's what I want you to do. You want I want you to give her the death weight, but the way you did it was unprofessional. So get basically, Gail Kim did not approve, then was not amused of how to Joe Shaw went about things, and that's pretty much what it was. And so I don't know if this is gonna lead to a match between Gail Kim and. And to Joe Shaw or, or watch this going on. I doubt that, but um but either way. I'm still looking forward to a match though between Jigel Shaw versus Jordan Grace for the you know for the TNA Knockouts World Championship. So um especially oh uh, Jigel Shaw is not on her own against the wall, you know, because she's not never neither of them at all. So watch her shine now. <laughs> I'm basically you know taking these um the lyrics from Bianca Belair's theme. You know, watch me shine now. I never needed you at all. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyways. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Sorry. Anyways, uh, Trent Seven and Mike Bailey, they basically cut a promo. They they promised vengeance against the Rascals, which is going to lead to the match at No Surrender, a tag team match with Speedball Mountain versus the Rascals. And pretty sure Steve Mack is going to get involved, and if that's the case, that's where I see Nick Nemeth returning. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, basically make things even. Eric Young. He wanted a match against Frankie Kazarian. That was, that was how it was advertised. But, Frankie Kazarian had better ideas. Frankie Kazarian says, basically, not on Eric Young's time, but on Frankie Kazarian's time. And he said, but, he's got, uh, something, to, um, you know, for him. You know, 
because you know they they used to know each other very well and and know how this business works and all that. And basically, he pulls off someone of a ghost from his past, and plays and the music plays, and then we see the scream, the you know the tower drum that says Big Demo. That's right, the former Killian Dane from WWE, who is now back to being as Big Demo in the Indies. And we have Eric Young versus Big Demo. It was a pretty good match with obviously Eric Young winning. Now Eric Young I went for the power driver. Except except one thing, it was not really a power driver because the the weight of Big Demo was so um you know too was so much too much for Eric Young that it ended up being basically like a a neutralizer while the the gotch style. And that's how Eric Young won. So so Eric Young cuts a promo, and basically, you know, let Eric, you know, Frankie Kazarian you know, you know, to challenge him and no surrender. So, um, and we'll see, um, again, we'll, we'll get to more of that later, by the way. Now, on the show, I wish they could explain me more, because if you remember seeing my, my predictions from 116 of being in the asylum, where I talk about, you know, no surrender, the car, that self. Um, the match out of nowhere... Ends up being a uh, no a no, no contenders match to the TNA World Championship title. Now the thing about that is, it wasn't announced on this show itself. It was, all it, it was announced was that Eric Young has challenged a match against Frankie Kazarian, and that's and that's all there was. There was not nothing that was mentioned on the show. Not even on chance to the commentators you know, with um, Matthew Rayroll and Tom Hennigan. They didn't even mention that you know that what tends to oh we got breaking news or you know what tends to you know, TNA management or whatever, that it's going to be a no, you know, a no, uh, a no longer tennis match for the TNA world title. None of that. It, I just saw on, on the site there, out of nowhere, it's just, it, that's what it is. Unless it's the announcement on Twitter that I didn't know about. I don't know. I just don't know. All right, maybe change the line here, folks. In fact, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do that later. Um, Tato Steals. Tonto Steels is, um, you know, was going to promo on Sire Brookside because Brad Sire Brookside wants a rubber match now because one one fall, uh, I mean, one win uh, from Sire Brookside and one other win from from Tonto Steels. And Tonto Steels basically let her know that, you know, you could just only take that one win and then that's just be done with it, right? But no, you want to challenge me? And, and she's like, you know, fine. Um, and it's going to happen next week on TNA Impact. I thought at least it would happen at no surrender, but they want to save it for uh for TNA, you know, TNA impact instead. We just find we just find either way. So um Dana Luna and I mean Danny Luna, excuse me, Dana Luna. <laughs> Danny Luna and uh Jody Threat. Uh they are a little bit upset, not not too much upset, but a little upset that they're not um getting a tile you know, a tile shot. You know, the, you know, the knockout stacking title shot. Meanwhile, um, you know, MK Ultra does. But there's a reason why, because they're invoking their rematch clause against Decay. And basically, they make it, uh, they make it, uh, you know, a, a pleasing argument that, you know, you know, that Danny Luna and uh, Jody Dre have won singles matches against the former knockout stacking champions. And that's why they want to, you know, um, you know, they should be uh, up in line for it. And but they said, but you know, they, they're gonna wait, um, they're gonna wait patiently after uh, whoever wins at no surrender between Decay and MK Ultra, and that's pretty much it. And I like this tag team, by the way. Um, the tag team between um, you know, Danny Luna and Jody Dread, I love the pairing, so um, we'll see how um, this how far the tag team goes. Uh... Uh, I guess I, I didn't see this part uh, on the show, but apparently, before the next match begins, there was a there was something that happened with uh, Savannah, Savannah, you know, someone named Savannah Dorn. I don't know. 
Oh, no, 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 okay, oh, okay, okay. Okay, never mind, folks. Actually, uh, what I'm about to um, tell you right now, folks, is now we can talk about Ash by Elegance. So, the personal um, counsel is, um, I talked about this guy before, by the way. He's, um, he's known to, uh, to work for TNA, even uh, during the time when it was called Impact Wrestling. During the time on Twitch TV. Now, I don't know if he's been working for them, you know, before that. But, basically, I talked about him, um, you know, constantly before. You know, in the past, you know, either on Mr. Rick and Jay's channel, or on my channel here. Where it pertains to, sometimes he will fill in for, you know, Mr. Santos on Twitch. Where it pertains to, um, you know how, you know, when, you know, what TNA, what TNA, or, or should I say, at the, at the time, Impact Wrestling was on Twitch TV. Um, you know, when they do the shows there. Not only on, on Twitch TV. You know, pertains to all uh, you know, watching it, watching it on the, on there, because you know you can also watch it on their uh, other um, you know network ch um, TV shows. Uh, I don't know if at the time if it was on Access, you know, before they end, end up being on Access, or it was on other um, uh, telev you know, television um, you know uh, network like like Pop TV. I think it was at the time, where you have two options. You could either watch it on Pop TV. Or at the time maybe it was um your know, um your know, access TV, which you know is that's that's the current one right right now, or you can watch it on Twitch TV. So we all chose at the time Twitch TV because Mr. Santos was going to be on there because Mr. Mr. Santos used to work there for TNA Impact you know at the time. Um, where it tends to you know whenever a commercial comes up for you know for you know for Impact Wrestling. Mr. Santos was there, you know, to either recap some things, and then she talked to some people online, you know, where it takes to on um, China Long on Twitch TV, in, in the Twitch in the Twitch chat, chat and all that. Uh, and it was always a good time, you know, where it takes to that. Um, some people, um, you know, may not um behave themselves during those times, but um, but that's the internet, you know, internet tough guys in the internet, um, you know, you know, you know those type of people. Trolls, you know that way, you know, soccer council member, you know what I mean. And sometimes when she's not there, this guy, I don't remember his name. That's the thing. I, I'm, I'm gonna try to remember his name there, but uh, I'll, I'll eventually get this name. But he, he's the one. Oh, sometimes he will fill in. And there were times he even fills uh, for, uh, for before the impact shows and and other shows he does as well. He, he does a great job. I, lo I love his voice. I love his um his catering. I love that he uh he pre he presents um himself and also presents um you know what to who he's with, and I'm about to give you a good example here because he's on um, the personal um count counselor, pertains to Ash by Elegance. And basically, he kicks out uh Savannah Thorn, who was the opponent for Ash by Elegance because this is gonna be uh, Ash by Elegance in ring debut. Now she kicks her out, but she kicks out the referee as well, and she kicks out the um. Uh, the ring announcer, you know, Jay Chung, and he does the introduction for Ash by Elegance. And Ash by Elegance comes out, she's wearing some kind of uh white furry coat, um, that she was wearing, and she takes it off and she presents herself and all that. And I'm watching this, um, this, this uh introduction, I'm watching this, um, this entrance, I'm watching her presentation and all that. And all I can say is, I can finally, you know, you know, vindicate and finally, um. You know, could prove other people wrong. For those that said that she is a knockoff, stealing the gimmick of Timeless Tony Storm. I didn't see no black and white entrance. I didn't see nothing that um that uh, of her being black and white. Hell, you know the um the personal counselor is not even a butler. He's and and as and as it was said there, he's a personal counselor. He's not a a personal butler. And on top of that, Ash by Elegance is, is you know, she is being presented like a movie star, but also is being presented like a model, like how Matthew Ray will say on commentary. Um, but yeah, she was not acting like a, like a movie star. She wasn't talking like a movie star. Um, you know, because one thing, you know, Ash, Ash by Elegance, you know, Dana Brooke, you know, whatever, whatever her real name is, you know, um, Daniel or whatever. She's not a, a real, she's not a good act, actress to begin with. I'm just, I'm just saying. But um, but I saw no elements here that she was ripping off, you know, Thomas Tony Storm, that she was stealing, 
Tiny Tony Storm's gimmick, and sh that she was um your a knockoff and and you're copying Tiny Tony Storm. This is not the same thing. So I don't know where again I don't know where these people got the idea that uh, Ash Bell Elkins was copying off Tiny Tony Storm, which I didn't see any of that. Even when she first came in to TNA back in Hard to Kill, I didn't see any of that. So I don't know where people's eyes um, were were um, being deceived and all that. I don't know where uh, where they got the idea of that. I don't know uh, why they they even said that to begin with. I don't, I don't know what um, I don't know what um, what they saw. I don't know what, what show they were watching during that time. But this is not the same thing. So. And she sure I wasn't acting like that either. She didn't. Hear, she didn't even have the, um that type of um your, your, accent. That that um that um Tyler Torrance Storm does. So there you go. That's that. Hopefully that um that um now, you know, um make, you know, a lot of sense. All I just sit there. And either, either way, I do make sense of this either way because I. Because again, I don't know where these people came coming from, uh, and saying that oh she's copying me off Timeless Tony Storm. Idiots. Now, as far as the match was, obviously it was a showcase for Ash by Elegance, and it was all right. The match was all right. Now she went for a finishing move, which is called, um, you know, basically it's a, it's a it's a swanton, but they call it the the rapid the rapid air, something like that. I think that was, that's what they're calling it. But either way, but Dana Brooke, you know, I mean Ash by Elegance now, that's her name now. Ash by Elegance, it, well, for or what she looked like in the ring, she was okay. Again, she didn't improve, but or that's all I can say. That's all, that's all I can say from there is that she looked okay in the match. Um, maybe uh, it would look a lot better if she um knows how to um you know, you know to improve um you know what she can do in the ring. But not bad, not bad. And that's it. Uh, Ashby against wins, and there you go. Not much to say. Um, and the personal counselor, um, uh, you know the personal counselor, um, you know, make sure that um he he raised the hand up you know in victory and all that and. He does the uh, introduction. He he's doing everything for um Ashman Elegance. So and then once we get to Tom Hennigan and Matthew Rayro uh you know to address us about some things uh with his routine wrestling, all of a sudden the personal counsel interrupts them by saying to let everyone know that Ashman Elegance has left the building. <laughs> there you go. And then we get to the main event, the system. The TNA World Champion Moose, Brian uh, Myers, and Eddie Edwards with Felicia Edwards versus Alex Shelley, Kushida, and Kevin Knight. And Max was pretty good. And Kevin Knight really shined in this match too. But in the end, Kevin Knight was taking the loss here, which I knew he would. And Moose was the one picked up the win. After the match, the system and the, the Bayface ends up fighting. Bayface got the, uh, the better of it with Alex Shelley getting the border, the border City stretch onto Moose. And then um you know the system pulls him off all uh, there, but that won't be the case once we get to no surrender. So, uh, because again, no one from no sur no no one, uh, from both sides cannot get involved because if they do, they were you know they're you know then they're then then Moose will lose, and lose the team world title, and or Al Choi will lose as well, which is his his um his side um gets involved. So again, uh, we'll get to that once we do our predictions. But before we do. Um, I just want to say, what to the show itself. Um, that's how the show went through the air, and not not this, and pretty much the show was pretty good. Uh, of what I saw, especially on uh, a Gong show, they they uh, hit all the keys of about what tends to uh, lean up to No Surrender, and I did I did the pretty well job. So very good, very good show. Okay, I think all uh, the tour my wrestling so far was six matches for TNA Impact from February twenty second, twenty twenty four. Let me just double check. Just to make sure. Yep, six matches. And my overall strength for the show, eight out of ten. I thought the show itself pretty well done, pretty good show. 
and now now we get to you know see what happened at no surrender speaking of no surrender what we're going to do right now folks is go to the tna no surrender 2024 preview all right folks now let's get to your tna no surrender 2024 preview and here are the matches so far that happened on the show i mean that's lined up for the show i should say um first of all the uh the, the no surrender pre-show matches features brian myers and eddie edwards of the system versus kushida and kevin knight i've got the name of the tag team they had um pertains to the, the jet pat setter something like that i don't know um but i went for the system to win here And the Rascals, Trey Miguel and Zachary Wentz versus Trent Seven and Mike Bailey, Speedball Mountain. And I went for Speedball Mountain here. And now for the main card, we got PCO versus Kong. But Kong, you know, I could see him winning the match. And I think the match, the next match they could do. Or maybe this could be a no contest because these two are monsters and all that. So you want to protect both monsters here. And you could do another match between these two guys, but this time, Monsters Ball. Yeah, I would definitely see that happening. Um, Josh Alexander versus Simon Gotch. Where I do see Simon Gotch winning here. Um, especially the, you know now that um, Josh Alexander, you know, is feeling a little different now that he doesn't he doesn't want to be there no more. It was sucks too because you know, he only you know. He went, he went, um, bro, you know, was, you know, was there in TNA because of Scott Moore. And by the way, I need to talk about, about his, um, his contract situation, by the way. That's one thing I forget to, um, to talk about as well, which tends to, um, you know, being the asylum. Which, you know, Omega Red brought that to my attention at the time. But I forgot, I forgot to mention that. That'll be for another time, though. Not, not for this video right here. But, but I'm going with some guys for the win here. So... Um, I, I think it's fair for you know some guys to win here because um, I think uh, it's it's way for Josh Alexander to return the favor here after a year ago they had the match, so we'll see we'll see that that that, that turns out to be okay. Uh, the TNA World Championship No One Contenders match against you know, pertains to Frankie Kazarian and Eric Young. Again, pertains to this, there was nothing that they mentioned on the show that was gonna be you know. No more concerners match for the TNA World title. Not even for Eric Young. Not to, not from the commentators. Not for TNA management. Not even on Twitter. If if I know, I would have went on Twitter to, to see if that was the case. But nothing at that law. So unless it was, unless it was announced on the show, I don't know. But I digress. But Eric Young, uh, should win to me. Uh, but I, I could do see Frank Zero win, win as well. That's if. The, you know, the outcome of the, ma the match later on, we'll, we'll, which we'll get to that. So, but we'll get back to that as well. So, well, I'm expecting a good match between uh, Frankie Kazarian and Eric Young because these two guys uh, work, work so well together. So, um, we'll see how that turns out. The TNA World's Knockouts, I mean, the TNA Knockouts World Captain Championship, Decay defends against MK Ultra. Decay is Rosemary and Havoc. MK Ultra is Master Slamovich and Killer Kelly. And I will go on for DK for one here. Because I don't see um MSK Ultra. I mean MK Ultra, I meant to say. MSK. <laughs> I don't see um MK Ultra um you know win back the titles here. So the case go retain here. TNA Exhibition Championship. Chris Saban defenses against Mustafa Ali will make his TNA debut. And I do see Mustafa Ali winning here. And I expect this match to be good too. Uh, can't wait to see how this match turns out. The TNA World Tag Team Championship, ABC versus the Grizzle Young Vets in the Best of Three series in the third match. And I do see the Grizzle Young Vets gain the win here, folks. And I expect this match to be you'll know, be ten times better than the, the last two of the Best of Three series matches that they had. So. The TNA Knockouts World Championship drew a great defense against the the Quintus Central Diva, Gigi Shaw. And I expect to see a good match here. 
And I do see Joe also wearing the belt here, especially how Jordan Grace um you know of, of her feelings now after what TNA did, you know, what um, Actum did for you know, for firing uh you know Scott the Moore. Cause Jordan Grace would not have resigned with, with TNA wrestling at the time, you know, when it was Impact Wrestling. She would not have resigned with uh, with them if it wasn't for you know for Scott the Moore. So the fact that you know Jordan Grace um stayed with the company because of Scott the Moore. Is now going to be the reason why you know Jordan Grace wants to leave you know TNA wrestling now. But we we shall see, man. But um, I'm gonna go for a safe route here. You know Jordan Grace to retain. Uh, but I will I'll I'll, I'll, be, I'll be okay if Joe so uh, it's up retaining here. So I mean winning winning I should say winning. It. <laughs> and finally, the TNA World Championship, no surrender rules match. By the way. Moose defends it against Alex Shelley, and I expect this match to be uh, obviously amazing, you know, from the last match they had. And I expect Moose to retain here, but at the same time, Moose is the same thing with um with Jordan Grace and Josh Alexander, where I can see uh, Moose also losing here too, especially that he's, he's he doesn't want to beat her anymore either. Because Scott Moore helped Moose a lot, uh, you know, you know, to get to get in better shape, and and, and train him, and you know, in the way as well. He, and he's been improving a lot. Not saying he was, um, he was he wasn't good before, because he's always been good. The problem is, he he didn't look he didn't look at in, in the best shape of his life, until Scott Moore told him to, you know, to get in great shape, and he did. So, so the way I see it, if Moose does lose it, then I see Eric Young. Or, in fact, no, I see Frankie Kazarian, I should say. If Moose wins it, you know, to, you know, to retain, I see Frankie Kazarian win the match against Eric Young. But, if Moose retains here, I could, just, I could definitely see Eric Young win that match against Frankie Kazarian. Unless they want to do, you know, Moose versus Frankie Kazarian, especially, you know, when it tends to um, the system, where Eddie Edwards is, is for that. Eddie Edwards and Frankie Kazarian has history. You know, they they despise themselves and all that. So I could definitely see that being um you know come into play as well. Not saying that you know, not saying that for concern you should be a baby face because you know why why would you do that when you um when you just hire him to heal. So I would not do that. But you know, you have you have to turn heal so um, but at the same time you know could, could that could that really work? Could that dynamic dynamic work with Frank Kazarian versus Moose? When the ball peels. Um, again, I will not turn um, your know, Frankie Zerian back to being babyface because you just turn him heel out of nowhere. So, um, so we'll see how that turns out. But if Moose does retain, I see Eric Young being the challenger. That much means he's got to be Frankie Kazarian. Alex Shelley, if he wins, I can see Alex Shelley versus Frankie Kazarian. You know, what is that match? So we just we shall see. Who knows what's gonna how it's gonna play out, folks? We shall we shall see how it's gonna play out though. Um and since the match, you know, with the Rascals versus Trent Seven and Mike Bailey is happening on the pre show. Um I guess again, Steve Mackin could get involved, which I, I could definitely see Nick Memphis still returning. But do you really want you know Nick Memphis returning, you know you know you know to make things even on the pre-show? Uh, you know, but I don't know. We'll see what they do. But that's pretty. That's much it, folks. That's that's the my my preview for it. And there you go. Not much to say about about it and all. It also makes me wonder about Chris Saban too, I way because Chris Saban, you know, he's he had a great he's got a great relationship with uh, Scott Moore as well, which is why he um um I remember um talking. About I remember um, they said something about you know, you know before that Chris Saban ends up being uh, executive producer for for TNA wrestling. Yeah, at the time was going to pack, you know. So he he got he got some he got some say uh what 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 goes on you know how the show is and you know, all too as well. So, um, but who knows, uh, what how he's feeling about this whole thing too, which is why I think you know, um, you know, Anthem is good. It's probably it's probably uh you know do some spring cleaning. To, to say the least. So, 
And by the way, I got more to say about, you know, about this whole thing with Scott and Moore and Anthem, you know, situation. Which, I'll do that for another, another time. Not, not, not here. So there you go, folks. That's my preview. Pertains to the, you know, for this show. So, we'll see how that turns, how the show turns out. So, that being said, that's it for the, you know, for this TNA Wrestling Review. Slash, TNA Preview. Pertains to, you know, the review for the TNA Impact Results. And pertains to the TNA preview, which tends to TNA No Surrender of 2024. And we'll see how how, how it is with tends to No Surrender. And that being said, thank you all for watching, folks. For this, the natural born, girl has to say peace on the streets, or you'll be well. Stay safe. Take care of yourself, everything that's going in the world. And with that being said, I am out here. Ta ta for now. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. God bless. And fuck Bruce Pritchard.